Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, Greg Anthony here, and glad you're back on the Investigative Journal on this March 27th, 2017 day on our calendar. And, you know, I've been covering the Vatican and the Jesuits and political intrigue, uh, world domination, and their involvement in our government and wars all over the world for a long, long time, since the 1980s when I was in Rome working as a journalist. And... uh, Today, I've got a lot on my mind and a lot to cover. So this is not a Jesuit or Vatican 101 course, an introductory course. This is an advanced course. This is going to take us through a lot of years, a lot of history. And uh, I want to do it quickly today because we can we can look at many issues, solve a few problems uh, and things that never get discussed in the mainstream. And it just brings to mind a a 60-minute show they did on fake news. They were trying to get to the bottom of fake news. And they divided it between all of these crazy news sites on on the web and professional journalists, their organizations. And they want you to believe that everything they tell you is the truth. When in fact, they leave out so many things that the real fake news comes right from those people. Because they don't deal with any of the major stories that, uh, that have any importance. They give you glossed over versions. They give you what the elite want us to hear. And uh, so I'll get to all that in a minute, but let's start out with a couple Vatican Jesuit quotes of the day. Of the day. Okay. And uh, let's remember this, though, before we do. Okay, we have President Trump. Before that, we had Obama. Then we had Bush. They're all one and the same, I think. And I think I even look back to President Bush uh, during his tenure after 9-11, he even said in the Washington Times that he is going to obey the Pope. And if so, though, if he does do that, if he does obey the Pope and all these presidents do, then they must destroy the Constitution. In the aftermath of the destruction of the World Trade Center, Bush apparently had been following the Pope's agenda right to a T. And let me give you a quote by Richard Thompson. This happened, this was in a book called The Papacy and the Civil Power. And he said this, Nothing is plainer than that if the principles of the Church of Rome prevail here, our Constitution would fail. The two cannot exist together. They are open and direct antagonism with fundamental theory of our government and all the popular governments everywhere. And this is from the Shepherd of the Valley, an official journal of the Bishop of St. Louis, November 23, 1851. If the Vatican ever gains a sufficient numerical majority in this country, and Catholics do, religious freedom is at an end. So those are my two Jesuit quotes of the day. Now, let's look at Washington for a second. And let me tell you why the Hegelian dialectic and why Trump is just playing the uh, populist right-wing man right now. He's the opposite of Obama, who did exactly the opposite. Obama wanted to destroy America. Trump apparently wants to make it better. So let's start out with health care. We know that uh, Obamacare is a disaster, and the reason the Democrats passed it when they had power was so that it would implode, and then they could have their single-payer government system where the government controls your health care, just like in Canada and other places. Now, that's totally opposed to the American train of thought, the American thinking. And uh, in health care, you know, there's uh, the best way is to never, you know, to uh, don't follow what the AMA says. Uh, Figure out an alternative way to live, good food, good things like that to keep yourself healthy, then you really don't need it. But there are always things that occur like train accidents and all these different, you could fall off a a bridge. So you're going to need health care one way or the other. The best way to do it is just basically in the open market. 
uh, basically let, uh, you know, buy it like you do auto insurance. And if you can buy it across state lines, uh, the health care will go down and you'll get better coverage. Allow a good patient-centered health care when you need it, like for broken arms and legs. Now, when you need it for uh, cancer cures, I recommend going to an alternative uh, place where doctors are allowed to really treat it properly and uh, not treat it with chemotherapy. There are many, uh, many uh, natural cures that may help you even more, but the F- they don't want that here because they want you really sick. But this whole thing about health care, uh, so the Republicans uh, have been crying for a year now we got to for seven years we got to get rid of obamacare so finally they have the house the senate and the presidency and uh they failed they could not pass a bill in the house so we're stuck with obamacare now that's a pre- and trump couldn't get it done either so that to me is a perfect example of how all of what they're telling us about this populist movement is going to fall on deaf ears. They're really doing absolutely nothing. A lot of window dressing is going on in Washington. But in the end, I will tell you, they're going to get their way with a government-mandated health care. Because what will happen is the Republicans won't do anything, the Democrats will take over, and then Obamacare will implode, and then they'll pass government health insurance. So you're going to be stuck with it. And in the meantime, all it is is a bunch of rhetoric in Washington. The Hegelian dialectic working perfectly well. Now, as far as wars, we're going to go back to the Vietnam War. We're going to go back to the Cold War today. Like I said, this is an advanced course in Jesuit Jesuit control. And let me tell you, they've been involved in all of them. And uh, I'm not going to explain each one in depth. You can go back to some of my old Jesuit 101 uh, shows and get that. But if you uh, look at what's happening now, We're going to be embroiled in this war on terror, this trumped-up war on terror that is basically pushed onto us by the elite of our own government. They're making millions off of it and the selling of arms and drugs and all this stuff. Uh, And that's going to go on for decades until they get their one world order, one world control. And we've done shows talking about Jesuit influence in Syria and really Obama's... uh, sympathy towards Muslims to let that fester and grow. Now, Trump apparently is going to go in and fight it, but it's, it's going to be there. This is, this this war is never going to end. Uh, and you'll see until they have control. Now we also today, uh, we heard on the news that North Korea is going to test a hydrogen bomb in a few days. And they've also said that they can launch, they're going to launch one to the West coast if they could. And then now we're building up nuclear uh, uh, defense systems so we can blow them out of the sky. So that's what we're involved with. Does it ever get any better? Now, let's look back. Let's go back to the Vietnam War. That's the 60s, right? And that even started earlier. The French were there a long time. And the Jesuits had their dirty little hands into that war. And this is why we're in the position. I said a long time ago. Because I, I was in the age of getting uh, taken to the Vietnam War. I was in that age, that draft age. That's, that was my war as a kid. And uh, let me tell you something. I lost a lot of good friends over there. But anyway, let's look at this. Avro Manhattan, you've heard that name if you follow the Jesuit and Vatican stories. He was a British journalist who worked for many years for the British Broadcasting, the BBC. He wrote over at least 15 books on the role of the Roman Catholic Church in in, uh, the world. In his book, Vietnam, Why Did We Go? Listen to the preface of this book, the foreword. Avro Manhattan, World Authority on Vatican Politics, has blown the cover on the real reason our boys suffered and died in Vietnam. He traces their death to the Vatican's passionate desire to make Asia Roman Catholic. Vatican agents hatched and plotted the Vietnam War. American soldiers were serving in the Vatican in their desperate struggle to survive the jungles. The hell of warfare, pain, death, and destruction. It was all engineered by the Vatican and the Jesuits. Now, I know a lot of Catholics may take it, <clears throat> excuse me, take exception to these facts, but we must these are facts. They're not fake news. What's fake is they don't tell you this in the mainstream. When this book talks about 
uh, the church, when he talks about the Catholic Church, he's not speaking about the faithful church members that have no idea of what's going on. He's talking about the people at the top, the rulers of the Vatican and the order of the Jesuits. Now, according to him, the war in Vietnam was fought <clears throat> because the Vatican wanted to create a power base in Southeast Asia from which to take over all the Southeast, uh, Southern Asia, and then all of Asia. The following are some from, uh, quotes from his book. Now, he said that Ho Chi Minh began before World War II to maneuver for a communist Vietnam. He received help from the U.S. against the Japanese, but used that aid to consolidate his hold on the highlands. So we're creating the war. We're giving them aid, right, to the, to the other side that we're going to go and fight against. And one of the things going on during that period of time, and especially if you were of age to go there, was people are going, why are we over there? What really happened? You know, that was a tumultuous time. Kennedy was killed because he wanted to end the war. And I've got a few choice quotes here. And that was in uh, the early, that was in 60, some, 61. But that had to go on long. They, they were making too much money in drugs, too much money in weapons to stop it. And the Vatican needed to get rid of all the Buddhists there and take control. Now, <clears throat> like I was said, Ho Chi Minh in August 1945 marched into Hanoi and set up the provisional government of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. A master strategist, he cooperated in the transplanting of nearly a million Catholic North Vietnamese into the South. After the election of Pope John the Twenty Third in nineteen fifty eight and the turn of the Vatican from the Cold War toward cooperation with Marxism, Ho Chi Minh made a secret deal with Pope John, which eventually led to the control of the country by of the by the North. Now, let's fast forward a little bit. Cardinal Francis Spellman, we've talked about him many times, haven't we? One of the most powerful men in America when he was the bishop, Archbishop of New York. Now, I didn't just make that up. I went to great lengths to find people that knew the inside story of Spellman. <clears throat> One happened to be a police detective from New York. And uh, Jim Rothstein appeared on my show many times. And uh, he made the same quote. Spellman was the most powerful man in New York. Now, he was a key man brought into this conflict. He was active in persuading the U.S. to select Diem and support him as the president of South Vietnam. He was made vicar general of the U.S. armed forces. It was called Spelly's War and called the G.I.s the soldiers of Christ, meaning the soldiers of the Catholic Church. That's what he called them in his frequent visits to Vietnam. Now, the Vatican according to Man Avro Manhattan, played both sides against each other in the, this Vietnamese civil war. They controlled Diem in the south while advising and making secret deals with Ho Chi Minh in the north. Thus, however, the war turned out. The Vatican would triumph and have control in Vietnam. President Kennedy's attempt to halt the bloodbath incurred the underlying wrath of the instigators of the war. Remember Kennedy, I don't know if you remember this, but he didn't want Spellman in the White House, and he made uh, several speeches that he wasn't going to be controlled by the papacy, even though he was the first Roman Catholic president. He stabbed him in the back. Now, Kennedy began to de-escalate America's involvement in the Vietnam War, and shortly before his death, uh, <clears throat> that was right before his death, the day after his brutal murder, this occurred. Now, tell me this ain't, this is not coincidence. And this is in uh, who, uh, <clears throat> Robert Morrow in a book called First Hand Knowledge printed this. He said at 8.30 a.m. Saturday, the 23rd of November, 1963, the limousine carrying, see, this is after right after Kennedy died, CIA Director John McCone pulled into the White House grounds. He was also there to transact one piece of business prior to becoming involved in all the details entailed in a presidential transition. The signing of the National Security Memorandum 278, a classified document which immediately reversed John Kennedy's decision to de-escalate the war in Vietnam. 
The effect of the Memorandum 278 would give the CIA carte blanche to proceed with a full-scale war in the Far East. In effect, as of November 23, 1963, the Far East would replace Cuba as the thorn in America's side. It would also create a whole new source of narcotics for the Mafia and the Vatican's worldwide markets. Okay, now back, uh, back to uh, Manhattan. He said the day after Kennedy was killed, the decision to stop America's involvement in Vietnam was reversed. Morrill's statement also revealed another reason for the Jesuits wanting to continue the war. They would make billions in the international drug trade. And for the past centuries, the Jesuits had been involved in the Far East drug trade. That's for four centuries, folks. And in a book called uh, The Book That Drove... <laughs> oh, wait. Assorted Authors, Dope Incorporated, The Book That Drove Kissinger Crazy, uh, it was said this. Since the original Jesuit mission had established itself in Beijing in 1601, the Society of Jesus had held the key to the Far East trade, including the drug trade. <laughs> Very interesting, huh? Now, the Jesuit controlled politicians in Washington wanted to continue this war in Vietnam, didn't they? They wanted to create a Catholic power in the, in the Southeast Asia. They had Kennedy assassinated. The Jesuits were behind it, just like they had Lincoln assassinated. Second reason for Kennedy's assassination, among several, was, remember the Fed, he wanted to get rid of the Federal Reserve, the phony banking system we're under, which isn't federal, by the way. It's a bunch of foreign banks that just print money, fiat money. So we have a, a real interesting thing going on here, Go, looking back to uh, the Vietnam War, don't we? Okay, let's go back to... Uh, Avro Manhattan's book. I'm going to take a quote to get you a general idea of why we went to Vietnam and why they were behind it, Vatican and the Jesuits. The political, this is uh, Avro Manhattan, the political and military origin of the War of Vietnam, he says, has been described with millions of written and spoken words. Yet nothing has been said about one of the most significant forces which contributed to its promotion, namely the role played by religion, uh, uh, which in this case means the part played by the Vatican and the Catholic Church and by her diplomatic counterparts. Their active participation is not mere speculation. It's a, it's a historical fact, as concrete as the presence of the U.S. in that country or the massive guerrilla resistance of Asian communism. The activities of the last two have been scrutinized by thousands of books, but the former has never been assessed, not even in the summarized form. The Catholic Church must be considered as a main promoter in the origin, escalation, and prosecution of the Vietnamese conflict. From the very beginning, this religious motivation helped set in motion the avalanche that was to cause endless agonies in the Asiatic and American continents. The price paid, says Manhattan, immense thousands of billions of dollars, the mass dislocation of entire populations, political anarchy, military devastation, and an unprecedented scale, the disgrace upon the civilized world, the loss of thousands upon thousands of young Asian and American lives. Last but not least, the wounding, mutilation, and death of hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children tragedy of Vietnam will go down in history. It's one of the most pernicious deeds of the contemporary alliance between politics and organized religion. Factors of a political, ideological, economic, and military nature played no mean role in the unfolding of the war, but the religion of the Catholic Church was one of the main instigators. From the beginning, her role has been minimized when not obliterated altogether. Concrete facts, however, cannot be wiped away so easily, and it is these which we shall now scrutinize, says uh, Manhattan, even if briefly. And so go to that book, uh, Why Did We Go? 
uh, Vietnam, Why Did We Go by Avril Manhattan, one of his many books that he's written about Vatican involvement. And isn't it interesting that would he be considered fake news? Of course. Anybody that talks this way is. Because they can't, they can't really do their dirty work. If this was known to the American people, a lot would be different. The Pope wouldn't be exalted. He wouldn't be called the King of, you know, he's called the King of Kings, even by the Vatican's the own words. You can go find those quotes. The King of King, he's the Lord of Lords. Not only is he, you know, the Vicar of Christ, he controls all law in the world. They tell you this in their writing. And then he comes over here to Congress, speaks before Congress, speaks before the United Nations. Don't people get it? Because I said this after the Vietnam War when I was working as a journalist, especially after I lived in Rome and found out their involvement in many other things, which we're going to get to in the second half hour. I'm going to go all the way back to Rome, Italy, back right around the time of the Cold War and talk about a couple people instrumental in making sure war is a part of American life. Do you realize since our country has been formed, there's only been 20 years we haven't been at war? We're always at war. We're at war, we're at war right now. We're sending more troops over now to Vietnam, or now, excuse me, to uh, the Middle East. And I said a long time ago, I said, if we took the truth about Vietnam, we would never go to war again. But we've been nothing, one, it's one war after another created by these people. But no one in the media covers it because they are controlled. And what they want to do is keep that control. That's why you hear all the nonsense going on in Washington. And it's getting a bit much, isn't it? And I have to follow the political stuff so I can at least talk about it. And once the first hundred days of the Trump administration is over, I will get back to a series I do called The Greatest Off-Broadway Stage Play Ever Produced in the History of um, the World. And that's the Trump presidency. And boy, are we being set up big time here. Just like he says, big time, big league. We're being set up big league for one of the biggest catastrophes to ever happen. Because if you really follow Bible prophecy, and if you follow what's going on in the world, it's always one big catastrophic war after another. And look what they did in Vietnam. This is going to make Vietnam look like, uh, you know, small potatoes, what they have planned now. And look what's going on. All the people killed in the Middle East. I mean, it's really sad. And we don't learn from it. And now we got... Iran to worry about, a nuclear, they're building up, the Jesuits are building up Iran, North Korea, to basically threaten our existence. Now, and they got ISIS, you know, <coughs> they created ISIS in order to create this a fear of terror, which came after 9-11, right? Because without 9-11, uh, this would have never, never happened, right? Uh, interesting. Uh you know, remember we talked, and I want to just end this. I got a minute. Remember we talked about the, all the shows I did on a case called Alperin v. Vatican Bank, where uh, federal lawsuits proved the Vatican was involved in Croatia in uh, in the genocide there of hundreds of thousands of people right after World War II. Well, the papacy was still trying to exterminate Orthodox Christians in Serbia in the late 1990s. They used the United States as their bully in that conflict to bomb, um, uh, uh, to bomb, right? The real butcher of the Balkans is the Pope and the Catholic Church. Using Clinton, remember that? <laughs> so, in uh, the next half hour, I want to talk about a man that I got to, I didn't know him personally, but got to know a lot of his antics personally, because I lived in Italy, Licio Gelli, and his connection to the Vatican, the CIA, and uh, much, much more, which leads up to the Vietnam War. Uh, back in three minutes on the investigative journal.
The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The following program is labeled dangerous and off limits by the supreme Jesuit command. But stand tall, people. Listen up, and you may just learn something. Okay, back for the second half hour, and before I get to the story of Litro Jelly, the CIA, and the Vatican all working together in Rome, Italy, something I learned about when I lived there, uh, I want to ask you this question. Why would the Jesuits and the Vatican use Hitler to annihilate the Jews, and then have Jesuit Cardinal Spellman provide a home in Palestine for them? Now, what I remember about this story that's very seldom talked about, one of the first political assassinations uh, of recent time, okay? This was before Kennedy. Now, let's not include all the presidents uh, around the time of Lincoln, and etc. But let's just look around this, this time. There was a defense secretary named uh, Forrestal. I believe he was defense secretary. He was opposed to creating the state of Israel. And he was thrown off of a uh, 10-story building. And uh, I remember interviewing someone who wrote a book about it because it's, uh, it's not really discussed much. And it was very enlightening on why they had to kill him. Because there was a movement not to create Israel back then. And Spellman, though, 
Spellman. Uh, he was one of the main operatives to push this through. And uh, anyway, on the surface, uh, you got to ask yourself that question, why? And really, when you want to answer it, it's a pretty simple answer. If you understand, like I said, this is not a uh, introductory course on the Jesuits, but with the Jews returning to its homeland, right, the Jesuits wanted them all rounded up and caused such bloodshed in that part of the world, which is going on today, right, uh, that they people would cry out for a peacemaker to come to the region. And who would be that peacemaker? The Pope of Rome, the Vatican, the ones who created the conflict, right? They've always wanted to restore the Pope's temporal power there. And when the Pope is given Solomon's throne in Jerusalem, the long-awaited goal will be accomplished. And we can see, we went back to Bush, showing how he was following the papal commands. We know Obama was. It's pretty obvious that Trump will be doing the same. But even if you go back to Reagan, you'll see that he was doing the Pope's bidding as well. And uh, he was, in fact, the president that brought uh, diplomatic relations back to the United States, setting up a papal embassy, so to speak, a consulate, a actual political representation here, after the politicians and our patriots cut off diplomatic relations with the Vatican because of the involvement of Abraham, the killing of Abraham Lincoln and the Jesuit involvement, the Vatican involvement. So we know Reagan was in the pot, in the, their pocket as well, correct? And we'll see when we start talking about Licho Jelly here, why that, that Reagan was even uh, involved with him in a little known story that I'll tell you about in a second. So anyway, Licho Jelly. Boy, we've talked a lot about him, haven't we, on this show? But for those of you that don't know, he was this head of this 2,400-member secret Masonic Lodge. Very important. And I remember reading all the stories and working on some of those stories because this scandal broke out in Rome when I was there. It was called P2. It was a neo-fascist organization in Italy that catered to the elite. And much of the elite were Vatican bishops and high-level priests who were outed as members of this Masonic Lodge in stories that came out in French and Italian newspapers. It's not fake news. It never got here. I know it never got here because I wrote, tried to write a story about it, given it to AP and UPI. They wouldn't take it. And I even know a couple other journalists that had their stories censored. So the American people never get the story here because they're under the control of the same people, the Vatican and the Jesuits. What do you think Rupert Murdoch, who owned Fox and all these newspapers here, well, who do you think he works for? He's a papal knight. He's a knight of Malta. So this membership was totally secret until these stories started coming out, and boy, did that create a scandal. But nothing was ever done. Even if you go to the Vatican's canon law, it states specifically that any priest that's involved in a Masonic Lodge is excommunicated. However, none of these people were. One of the biggest members was a, the head of the Vatican Bank, Cardinal Marchinkus. And for his involvement in the banking scandal of the century there, and him being involved in money laundering with the Vatican and, and the mafia and the killing of a bank president, he was airlifted by the United States military to a nice little resort archdiocese in Phoenix where he played golf every day and lived like a king till he died, I think it was, what, seven or eight years ago. Now, <clears throat> Jelly, who was this guy? Let's look at it. He's running this lodge, right? And uh, he was responsible, let's go way back, for providing Argentina. Isn't that a nice connection to the present-day uh, Pope, right? With the Exocet missile. He was a double agent for the CIA and the KGB. These are all facts. He assisted many former Nazi high officials in their escape from Europe to Central America. Fact. 
he, with American and, and uh, Vatican involvement, the passports being given to them, immunity given to them. You know, here we fought against the we fought against uh, Nazi Germany, but we're secretly bringing in high level Nazi officials to our country to run such fake organizations like NASA. So, and they escaped to Europe, Central America, here. He had close ties with the Italian Mafia. Fact. He was close associate of Benito Mussolini's fascist elite. Fact. He was also closely affiliated with Roberto Calvi. He was the bank president that was killed because he knew too much in this huge Vatican bank scandal that broke out in Rome. And uh, he was murdered by the Mafia assassins and the, and the Jesuits, the Thule Society, in a ritual murder ordered by the Jesuits, sponsored by Rothschild, third Baron, you know, third Baron Rothschild. Now, Jelly's Secret Lodge. Now, when this, I remember when this story broke, and Marchinkus was involved in this. This is the, the bishop, the head of the Vatican Bank. The Italians were trying to indict him on murder charges, but they could never get to him because the, he was airlifted out and sent back to America. But he did get indicted for bank fraud, and the Vatican paid the, the Italian government about $220 million to <clears throat> basically let the charges go away. Now, this lodge consisted of extremely important members of the Savam, you know, of the uh, Knights of Malta, including armed force commanders, secret service chiefs, head of Italy's financial police, 30 generals, <clears throat> admirals, newspaper editors, television and top business executive, both American, French, Italian, and key bankers. Not to mention the 150 cardinals and bishops that were outed, including Calvi, the guy who was hung under the Blackfriars Bridge. That's where they found him. Licho, and did they really investigate the murder? Eh, not really. There were a couple pawns that were given up, but uh, they never got to the bottom of it. Licho Jelly and others in this P2 Lodge were behind the assassination of John Paul I. And we've gone over why he was assassinated. He spent 33 days in office. <clears throat> and it was so interesting that he was trying to clean up the Vatican Bank, that he was, one, he was instrumental in outing these bishops as being members of the Masonic Lodge. He wanted to do a lot of things. He was basically backstabbing them like Kennedy, and he had to go. He also wanted to clean up the pedophile rings in New York, and he wanted to basically out Spellman for his involvement in it, and that was verified through a phone call he made to a Father Ritter in New York who basically wanted to clean up the pedophile ring, and this was verified by a police detective who actually was there when the phone calls were made. Now, the central figure in Europe, this is him, Jelly, in South America that linked the CIA, Masonic Lodge, Vatican ex-Nazis, and several South American governments, the Italian government, and several international banks, was none other <clears throat> than Licho Jelly. Remember the name Klaus Barbie? He with Barbie, Reinkin, uh, Heinrich Rupp, met with Ronald R. Rewald in Uruguay to arrange for the Argentine time purchase of the French-made Exocet missile used in the Falkland Island attack to kill British soldiers. But who really is this jelly and why is he so important? You got to understand, one must understand the complex post-war years of Europe. The biggest threat to Europe in pre-war times was communism. It was the great fear of communism that gave birth to the fascists and the Nazis. Though both sides were dreaded, the fascists represented right-wing government, while the communists represents left-wing government. And I want this part of the story, which is uh, interesting, to sum it up for me. I'm taking it from uh, an article that was written in December 15, 2006. And the people were afraid to give their names. But uh, the title of the article is, Who is, the, who is Licho Jelly? Who is the Illuminati? 
So I want to give them credit for this part of the story. Uh, <clears throat> it was the right wing that the United States and the Catholic Church desired over communism because communism would destroy the capitalist system. This is why the CIA and the Vatican had to go through with Operation Paperclip. The Nazis had massive amounts of Soviet intelligence, had infiltrated communist partisans, and were in no way going to give up to the Soviets. Now, it's interesting that Jelly, he worked both sides of the fence. Now, he helped found, founded the Red Brigade, and I remember them quite well because I lived under that reign of terror created by the U.S., the CIA, and Jelly, and this Red Brigade organization, just one of a number of uh, <clears throat> terrorist organizations they created in Italy. And this was kind of the precursor of uh, giving them a little bit of, uh, you know, training on how to create this worldwide terrorist organizations that are going on today. He also helped establish the rat lines. He worked as a double agent for on communist, spied on communist partisans and worked for the Nazis, which assisted flight of high-ranking Nazi officials from Europe to South America with passports supplied by the Vatican and with full acknowledgement and blessings of the United States intelligence community. Now, the U.S. participated in war crimes tribunals of the Nazi officials and maintained an alliance with communist Soviet Union. Secretly, the U.S. was preparing for the Cold War and needed the help of Nazis in the eventual struggle the U.S. would have with the Soviet Union. Jelly's agreement with U.S. intelligence to spy on communists after the war was instrumental in saving his, li in saving his life. He was responsible for the murder and torture of many Yugoslavian partisans. Now, it's also interesting to note, he was connected with the Vatican from the days of the rat lines, and he worked for American intelligence as well. He formed the P2 Masonic Lodge, which did not follow the direction of any Grand Lodge. It was supplied estimates of $10 million a month by the CIA. Its membership was a who's who in the intelligence, military, and Italian community. So important was Jelly's influence that he was even a guest of honor at the 1981 inauguration of, Link, of Reagan. And he's right behind Reagan. You got pictures of Licho Jelly. This <laughs> double agent working with the Vatican right behind Reagan. So what do you think goes on that went on? And people have the gall to say that the Vatican is not connected to any of this. They're connected to it today, folks. Probably even more than they were back then. It just gets worse. So, in all the stories we've done on Licho Jelly, it's nice to wrap it up. And uh, this story, this article, does it quite well here. So I'm going to read you another couple quotes. He said, that Jelly used blackmail in order to prominent to gain prominent members of his P2 Lodge. Its membership is estimated, like we said, at about 2,500 members, including 300 of the most powerful men in the Western world. Interesting, huh? Okay, so including, there was, you know, these 2,500 members, almost 300 of the most powerful men in the Western world. No wonder they're getting $10 million a month, right? He, uh, in the past, if you look back, he was close to Pope Paul VI, Juan Perón of Argentina, Argentina, Libyan dictator Mohammed Gaddafi, and many high officials in the Italian and American governments. Uh, he's also reported to have some dealings with uh, George Bush. Jelly and his P2 Lodge had staggering connections to banking, intelligence, and diplomatic passports. The CIA folks and the Vatican poured hundreds of millions of dollars into Italy in the form of secret subsidies for political parties, labor unions, communication businesses. At the same time, in fact, the, I worked for the American newspaper and I found out they were getting CIA money. At the same time, the agency continued its relationship with far-right and violent elements as a backup. Should a coup be needed to oust a possible communist government, 
This covert financing was exposed by the Prime Minister of Italy in a speech to Parliament. He indicated that more than 600 people in Italy still remain on the payroll of the CIA. Licio Gelli was an ardent Nazi and a perfect asset of the CIA. As part of Reinhard Gellin's intelligence team, he had excellent contacts. Gelli was a go-between for the CIA and the Vatican through his P2 Lodge. And, you know, these are stories I <clears throat> actually learned about when I was living there. So this is not fake news. But how come the mainstream media never reports it? And they're the ones that are calling everybody on the Internet fake. Now, granted, there are a lot of stories out there that are crazy, and you know them as well as I do. And in the 60 Minutes article, uh, show they did this weekend, they don't give the American people credit enough to know the difference, acting as big brothers of knowledge, when they're the ones keeping the most important stuff from you, working together with the Vatican and the Jesuits to create a one-world order, one-world government. Don't forget that. Now, Jelly was involved in Project Paperclip, and it was supposedly stopped in 57, 1957, when West Germany protested to the U.S. that these efforts had stripped it of its scientific skills. There was no comment about supporting Nazis. Paperclip may have ended in 57, but as, as you can see from Jelly and his international dealings with the CIA in Italy and P2 and Heinrich Rupp and his involvement in the October Surprise, the ramifications of paperclip are worldwide. The Nazis became employed CIA agents. And some are living up in Idaho today, engaging in clandestine work with the likes of Bush, the CIA, Kissinger, and the Masonic P2 Lodge. This is but one of the results of Operation Paperclip. Another umbrella project, and we talk a lot about, I've talked a lot about Operation Gladio. So I'll leave that for another time. But what about the spawning MK Ultra? A secret laboratory was established and funded by CIA Director Alan Dulles in Montreal, Canada, at McGill University in the Allen Memorial Institute, headed by psychiatrist Dr. Ewan Cameron. For the next several years, Cameron waged this private war in Canada. What is ironic about Cameron is that he served as a member of the Nuremberg Tribunal who heard cases against Nazi doctors. And let me make a couple comments here. Ewan Cameron was outed as this doctor who was performing all these experiments, killing young kids and babies and orphans in what was called the Duplessis orphan story that we've covered many times in Canada. And that was, an, that was a scam run where nuns in a Catholic orphanage would f uh, write fake papers that all these orphans were mentally ill, transferred into mental institutions when they weren't mentally ill, so that Cameron could do, you know, his stupid experiments on them, many of them dying or suffering, you know, s suffering tremendous uh loss even to this day. Now even to this day some of the survivors of the Duplessy orphans are trying to get justice and they can't. We've discussed this story even as far as last year. How many articles do we do on that? So Cameron's name comes up again. One of the interesting things about when you look back at the uh, when you look back at the Nuremberg Tribunal who's supposedly getting to the bottom of the Nazis, etc. You find that many of the high-level Nazis were never tried. Vatic involvement in the Nazi movement was covered up because they sent a Jesuit priest who started the School of Foreign Service. Remember, we've talked about him many times. Ed, Father Edmund Walsh, the head of the School of Foreign Service, who's prominently displayed on Eisenhower's website. So we know even as far back as Eisenhower was in the pocket of the Vatican and even farther than that. So we have Father Edmund Walsh, for no apparent reason, going over to for oversee the Nuremberg trials to make sure that the real information was kept out. 
and the Vatican involvement and Jesuit involvement was never told. So, oh boy, so we got Cameron working, uh, you know, on MK Ultra. This was the brainchild of Richard Helms, who later came to be CIA director. It was designed to defeat the enemy, supposed, and I put that enemy in quotes. It's a brainwashing technique. MK Ultra had another arm involved in chemical and biological warfare known as MK Delta. The doctors who participate in these experiments use some of the same techniques as Nazi doctors. I put doctors in quotes. Techniques used by Cameron, which we have talked about in the Duplessis Orphan story, and previous Nazi scientists included electroshock. That's what's going on in the poor orphans of Duplessis, the Duplessis Orphan story where these Catholic orphanages were used uh, to, to do this. Electroshock, sleep deprivation, memory implantation, memory erasure, sensory modification, psychoactive drug experiments, and many more cruel practices. But that's okay. It's never, ever talked about. That's why the mainstream media is a joke. And they're going to do everything to cover it up, folks. Everything possible. Now, Project Paperclip brought us MK Ultra. Ultimately, brought in key players involved in the assassination of, of the Pope. Remember, the October surprise sabotage of Carter's peace talks, and a great many other things still classified to this day. Uh, the research of all this shows that the CIA, which was originally the OSS, remember how we talked about the connection between. Pope uh, Pius XII and the head of the OSS in the Vatican at the time where the CIA basically was formed and all of the connections go way, way back. Uh, so we got the CIA-Vatican alliance that assassinated John Paul I, JFK, and literally hundreds of dictators of third world countries. I mean... This, this uh, organization needs to be outed if we're ever going to get to the truth, folks. And that's what this show is really all about, kind of an advanced course going over a lot of things that we've talked about. To get the big picture here, you have to get the big picture or you'll never figure out all the small minutia going on today that you're being presented with. So I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back tomorrow on The Investigative Journal. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's CrossTheBorder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven-year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, the rapture will be canceled. That's crosstheborder.org.